All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally, Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once in a lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super fascinating video today. We're going to react to what happened with the Muslim majority of Spain by the channel Nolegia. I personally have not lived in Spain, but in Portugal. And recently I found out about the rich history of Muslims in Portugal and of course in Spain, in the Iberian Peninsula, El Andalus. As a recent revert to Islam and someone that grew up in the West, all of this is news to me. We didn't learn a thing about the Muslims in Europe, let alone the Muslim majority in Spain. With no further ado, guys, let's have a look. Due to the lack of reliable contemporary sources, it's hard to know exactly what happens when the Muslims entered the Iberian Peninsula, or why. However, a combination of possibly authentic contemporary sources and later written accounts give us an idea of what occurred, starting with the prior Muslim conquest of Maghreb and the ongoing Visigoth civil war in Hispania. While it's not crystal clear as to how the Visigoths in Hispania had turned on each other, it does seem evident that a civil war was afoot in the early 8th century. The Visigoth elites had been on a downward spiral for some time, and upon the death of their king, Vitiza, the situation escalated rapidly. There were Even though this is an assumption and not hard historical facts, it could hold true, of course, because if we look into empires, every single time they get corrupted, every single time they get weakened, this is when they get taken over. It is very simple. Yes, sir. Has not Obey. appeared to have majority support, although two contenders stood out in particular. Roderick and Aquila II. Sources conflict when it comes to who Those was or names. if there was one single king at the time of Islam's entry into Spain, but it's generally believed that there was a state of royal division based on numismatic evidence. In this reality, Aquila would have ruled over the Ebro Basin and Septimania, while Roderick managed the rest. It was Roderick, however, who proved most relevant Those are in Germanic the events names. to follow. As the Visigoths, this is something that I heard of as well, that it was not the Spaniards, that it was not the Portuguese people that actually shunned the Muslims of the Iberian Peninsula, but that it was a ruling elite of northern men. The kingdom of Hispania was struggling to stay afloat in 711. North African Umayyad governor Tariq ibn Ziyad led thousands of his Muslim warriors into southern Spain. King Roderick led his own men against the invaders, meeting them in the south at the Battle of Guadalete. Though there is a severe lacking of contemporary sources recounting the events of the invasion as a whole, we know that the Battle of Guadalete was decisive and brought about the death of the Visigoth king. 
How the monarch died is not entirely clear, but it's speculated that a portion of the Visigoth army refused to support the alleged usurper king, and thus either withdrew entirely, or at a minimum, pulled back enough to allow the Muslim attackers to surround the fighting portion of the Visigoth troops. The latter was then routed, and Roderick was slain in the final leg of the battle. Now, the door was wide open for Tariq and his men to push forward. The surviving Visigoths remained divided and at odds with each other, and the Muslims soon gained reinforcements under Divide the command of Musa ibn Nasair. Aside from a small region on the northern border, the Umayyads had seized the whole of the Iberian Peninsula in only a few years. Their next challenge was to set up a new administration to manage what would now be named Al-Andalus. However, this was not altogether difficult for the Muslims to do. While religions and cultural differences between the invaders and their victims were stark, much of the Visigoth elite hadn't cared all that much about supporting their kingdom anyway, and thus would do whatever they were asked in order to protect their own power. This led to a series of agreements between the Umayyads yep. and Visigoths, which ultimately kept life fairly consistent for the conqueror's new Christian subjects. Mm -hmm. Many of the local... Yeah, absolutely, and this is something that I found out as well, learning about the history of my land. My parents are from the Balkans, northern Macedonia to be precise, and we always heard those horror stories about the Ottoman Empire torturing us, enslaving us for 500 years. However, the Ottoman Empire, with 500 years of occupation could not do to the Balkans what communism did in 20 years. Communism eradicated religion, period. Islam, Christianity, all of it was shunned, was banned. However, when the Ottomans ruled the Balkan, guess what? The churches were still open and practicing. Of course, otherwise we wouldn't have those churches to this very day. The local Christians nevertheless would soon begin converting to Islam. Though exact numbers are unknown, no. and Spain would remain under Muslim rule for centuries. From the Umayyad Caliphate to the Emirate of Granada, the Iberian Peninsula was becoming more and more Islamic. However, this was still a temporary status, because as we know, Spain would soon become synonymous with Christianity yet again. Exactly. The Christian inhabitants of the region have been piece by piece chipping away at the Muslim rulers in Iberia in an effort known as Reconquista, starting back in the 8th to 9th century. In 1035, the Kingdom of Aragon was established on the east end of the peninsula by the Christian reconquerors, shortly followed by the formation of the Kingdom of Castile toward the center, which would eventually be sandwiched by the Christian Kingdom of Portugal. This mm -hmm. left a relatively small chunk of Iberian lands to the Muslim conquerors, and internal strife was beginning to bubble with the remaining emirate. As the Muslim stronghold weakened, the Christian kingdoms were strengthening. In 1469, Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile were wed, and the race was on to once and for all unite the Spanish lands. After convincing Pope Sixtus IV to deem the planned invasion a crusade, the Catholic monarchs, as they were often called, laid siege to the Muslim resistance. On January 2nd, 1492... This video is very interesting, however, it would be so much more fascinating to know what the peasantry did. Of course, we really have no records about it, but this would be so fascinating to know if the people converted to Islam willingly, if there was force, if those people then converted to Catholicism willingly, if there was force, etc., etc. The Sultan of the Emirate of Granada, so Muhammad XII, finally surrendered his land to the Christian kingdom. Kingdoms. And just like that, Al-Andalus was no more. Nevertheless, the Islamic faith throughout Iberia didn't disappear overnight. At its peak, Islamic Spain had housed upwards of 5 million Muslims. And while the number had declined somewhat drastically by the fall of the Emirate of Granada, there was still at least half a million Muslims throughout the Al-Andalus lands. This is because, at first, the Christian reconquerors had opted to feign tolerance for both the Muslim and Jewish populations within Iberia. In the Excuse Treaty of Granada, 
The Catholic monarchs agreed to treat their new Muslim subjects, what are you talking about? Moors, with tolerance and fair treatment. As for the Jewish citizens, the treaty gave them the option to either convert to Christianity or leave the Iberian Peninsula within the next three years. This agreement, however, never really mattered to the Spaniards. In March of 1492, Ferdinand and Isabella issued the Alhambra Decree, which ordered the full expulsion of all practicing Jews from all of the monarch's territories. Any who wished to remain... Of course, we cannot talk about this here on YouTube, but I would propose to ask yourself why this happened. And Spain would be there required answer, to convert to Catholicism, and many reluctantly did. There was also okay. a push for the remaining Moors to convert to Catholicism alongside the Jews, notably urged by the Archbishop of Granada, Hernando del Talavera, and the Archbishop of Toledo, Francisco Cisneros. By 1499, pressure for such forced conversions sparked a rebellion among the Moors, but this only ended in the complete reversal of religious tolerance from the Catholic monarchs, who now gave the Muslims the same ultimatum that the yeah, Jews. Religious tolerance as long as you convert to Catholicism. Said previously. Then we received. tolerate you. This drastically reduced the Moor population throughout the Spanish lands, but it wouldn't be the last expulsion either. At the beginning of the 17th century, King Philip III of Spain issued a decree aimed at expelling all descendants of the former Muslim population, even those who had converted to Catholicism. By this point, the Arabic language had already been outlawed by Philip II, and Arabic books had been burned en masse. Oh. It's believed that the fear of continued rebellions and a want for religious unity is what led to these acts. But whatever the reason, they made being a Muslim in Spain essentially impossible. It's believed, formally, that indigenous Islam had finally come to an end in Spain by 1727, after the final large-scale crackdown on those who had remained. All the while, the Muslim world of North Africa and the newly expanded Ottoman Empire had become safe havens, not just for Muslims, but even for the Iberian Jews. Many of both faiths had fled to these lands as opposed to trying to remain on the Iberian Peninsula in the face of persecution. So check this out. This is not an Islamic channel. This is a Western channel. And you can see that the Ottoman Empire, as I said in the beginning, was home for the Christians. And here you can see for the Jews even. However, in Christian Spain, there was no tolerance for any other religions. Of course, this is very reminiscent of today's Europe. Today's Europe that preaches tolerance tolerance for everyone, but of course they're very Islamophobic. There wasn't much of a reason for any religious minority to remain under the Spanish crown, no, especially for the Jews and Muslims. Sure, this means they? that the answer to what happened to the Muslim majority in Spain can be explained in two parts. For one, the fall of the Muslim leadership over Al-Andalus meant that many Muslims began to leave or convert voluntarily as they saw their own rulers and final Islamic emirate collapsing around them. But given that there were still around half a million Muslims in the Spanish lands, even at the time, it's clear that something else caused indigenous Islam to die out. And that's exactly the case. The Catholic monarchs and their descendants saw no reason to follow the rules they'd agreed to with the Treaty of Granada, and overall had essentially no tolerance for religious dissension. Thus, the determination to force conversions and expel all Jews and Muslims who refused to become Catholic led to a stunning decrease in both populations. As for the Muslims, the Spanish crown gave no leniency by the reign of Philip III, even for the descendants of the converts to Christianity. This ensured that even Islam being practiced in secret would disappear from the kingdom. 
and with the nearby North African and Ottoman lands welcoming the expedition. This is something that is mentioned over and over again by the Islamophobes. Oh, Islam is so violent. How can they go to war? Don't you see here it says, fight the ones who fight you. Yeah, duh. Fight the ones who fight you. Fight the enemies of Islam. What does that mean? Who are the enemies of Islam? Historically, you can see it. Here you had true enemies of Islam shunning those people, kicking them out. If you are a Muslim living in a Western country and nobody is stopping you from practicing your religion, those people are obviously not enemies of Islam. But here you see what happened violently. Those people have been shunned, persecuted and forced to convert. What you gonna do now? Not stand up and fight? And their How descendants with open arms. Doesn't make sense. Why would they have wanted to stay in Spain anyhow? Of course. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Very interesting to hear the dynamics and the backstabbing here, making treaties, telling everybody about religious freedom and inclusion, and then ultimately shunning all the Jews and the Muslims from Spain. I'm not laughing because it is funny, but because it is so extremely hypocritical. And especially if you look into nowadays an age where the Muslims are always the bad guys, always depicted as terrorists and what not. So intolerant, so bad bigoted, boo-hoo. But here you can see, of course, Christian domination haven't taken place as well. But as I said throughout the video, I would have loved to hear more intrinsic detail about the peasants that lived in those lands. What kind of people were those? What was their indigenous religion before Christianity was imposed or before the introduction of Islam? What was the religion of those original Spaniards, if you will? And how did they welcome Islam? Were they against it? Did they only convert to Catholicism because they were forced, because of economical reasons? What was the true perception of the people on Islam. If you know anything about it, please let me know in the comment section. And moreover, if you have more detailed videos about this, please post them in the comment section as well. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, click the links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.